Kevin Apier, 16 wins against the M's, is most against any team. Bottom first, no score. Each in a row squares the bunt, but he doesn't make contact. Next pitch. I think he made contact. That's deep. His sixth home run of the year. Eighth career leadoff home run. His second this year, 1-0 Mariners. Bottom third, tied at one each in a row, facing Apier again. Squares the bunt. This time it goes foul. Next pitch. Each a row. Homers again. His second of the game, seventh of the year. His second career multi-homer game. Mariners up 2-1. Take another look. Hard to tell if it's a bat or a sand wedge each row has there. Four for four, four runs, two RBI. Bottom five, same score. Brett Boone facing Apier with the bases loaded. And Boone going deep. His 19th of the year. Mariners up 6-1, and they win at 8-4. Texas at Oakland, Miguel Tejada leading all active players in games played with 499, so he's going to be the 34th player to go 500 straight. Our never missed a day of work list, and Tejada would have to play every game until the 2016 season to catch Cal's 2,632. Top four, Rafi. Look at this. How about it? Rafi Hill, Paul Nero, the bunt base hit. <laughs> There's your highlight of the night. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, but is it a top 10 highlight? That's for Palmero. That's my first bunt in 15 years, if you can read lips. Tejada in an 0 for 12 slump, taking Victor Santos for his 11th. A's are going to win 4 3. Ellis and Hatteberg in the team's Tuesday home run circle as well. Texas has lost. 10 straight on the road. Again, in South Florida, who's going to pitch the one-hitter this time? Jay Show in the Mets or Carl Pavano in the Marlins? Well, let's see. So on the mound, bottom of the second. Two out, no score. Derek Lee with a deep shot. Jeremy Burnett says, give me that. Lee 0 for 3 in the ballgame. Bottom of the fourth, two out. Yvonne Rodriguez, line drive. Jose Reyes showing the leather. Pudge 0 for 3. That ends the inning. So no hitter through four. Bottom of the fifth. So still with a no hitter. Did I say that? Juan Encarnacion. Deep single breaks up the no hitter. You broke it up. You jinxed it. Next batter is Lee Encarnacion trying to right. steal. Jason Phillips says, you know, that's for breaking up my man's no hitter. So face the minimum batters through five. Bottom of the sixth. Todd Hollinsworth. A shot. Cliff Floyd. Give me some glove. That looks like a Sports Center top 10 nominee to me. So faced the minimum through six, 71 pitches, 55 for strikes. Top of the seventh, Carl Pavano pitching. Jeremy Burnett hitting. And he's got his 11th home run of the season. Mets up one up. Bottom of the seventh. So leaves the game with a split nail on his pitching hand. What's up with that? He didn't care about the no-hitter, but he surely wanted to win today because they lost the game yesterday by one nothing with one hit. So his goal was winning the game today. Sports Center getting multicultural. David Weathers relieves so. Pudge grounds out to third the end of the inning. Mets pitchers face the minimum through seven. Bottom of the ninth. Mets up five nothing. Armando Benitez gets Andy Fox. Mets win it five zip, another one hitter while facing the minimum 27 batters. Now you'd think it would be tough for the Mets to improve upon Steve Traxel's one hit shutout of the Angels on Sunday, but again, so and company faced the minimum 27 batters for the first time in team history. 75% of their pitches were for strikes and they allowed no walks. San Francisco and Los Angeles, two games in Central California separate them. Lennox Lewis throwing out the first pitch in town for the big heavyweight fight Saturday. Hey, we have our own heavyweight fight in this corner. Barry Bonds in the other corner. Kevin Brown tail the tape. They're both 38. Bonds has got the 30-pound weight advantage. Both having great years. Bonds with 19 homers. Browns, two-point ERA, leads the majors. On the undercard, Paul Loduca. 24 game hit streak. He went four for four. Last Dodger to go 24 in a row. John Shelby in 88, one nothing Dodger. Round one of the main event. Top three, two on one out. And, oh, it's double trouble. Check your card. Round one to Kevin Brown as Bonds hits into the DP. In between the main event, Jesse Foppert's pitch is gonna. Well, it's gonna get away from Benito Santiago, and it gets it gets stuck in the. The Cregan Auto Parts sign. Mention this highlight and get a free loop job. All right. Round two. Brown and Bonds. Bonds a 256 career hitter against Brown, but he pops up to third. The decision goes to Brown. Bonds 0 for 3 with a walk. Okay, Neil. It's 3-0. Kevin Brown. Thank you. Brown. Thank you. Bottom sixth. Brown, he had an RBI single earlier, and he's batting here and 
really is. Yeah, he's got groin injury written all over this run, and he's going to leave with a 4 nothing lead, and Brown is gone, but Bonds continues to fight on. Top eight, he's trying to shop at the gap, but Dave Roberts flashing the left glove. Dodgers win 4-1. As for Brown's injury, Peter Gammons reminds us that Brown has Beating the injury bug was back. Denny Nagel seeing his first action of the season. He had elbow soreness, but his elbow couldn't have hurt him as much as Ryan Klesko hurt him Tuesday night. Two-run shot for Klesko, his second of the game, number 14 of the year. Third multi-home run game this season. His first home run versus a lefty this year. Nagel said a bad word. Padres up 3-0. Bottom eight. Padres up 4-3. Jay with Tosic facing Jose Hernandez. Donaldo Mendez making the play. And the Padres win it 4-3 facing David Bell who swings and strikes out at least that's what Marty Foster says but Bell says hey wait a minute man I I tipped that ball into the dirt that's not strike three Larry Boa says hey man I need some home cooking and we've lost seven of eleven and gets it from Field and Colbreth who says let's take another look because I do believe that Bell is telling the truth and you can see that he was and so Bobby Cox comes out and says hey what's up and Colbert says well you're out Sixth time this season that Cox has been showing the shower. Bell now back at the bat, and well, uneventful, he goes down. Bottom nine, game tied at four, two in scoring position, and Bell is gonna score pinch runner Nick Punto. Phillies win 5-4. Turk Wendell, first win in two years. Tuesday. All right, he was managing the D-Rays against the Yankees. Jeff Weaver winless in his last four starts. Picture frame day at Yankee Stadium. Top five. Travis Lee facing Weaver. Lee says, frame this. And Weaver not happy for his candid shot. Number six for Lee, three for five, two runs, three RBI. Next batter, Ben Grieve. That's deep and gone as well. Weaver can't believe it, neither can Joe Torre. Ten hits, six earned runs, and five innings for Weaver. Number four for Grieve, six, one raise. Top seven, eight to one Tampa Bay, two on. Marlon Anderson off Sterling Hitchcock. That's gone. Anderson, four for five, three RBI, his third home run of the season. Bottom seven, 11 to one raise. Ruben Sierra leading off against Travis Harper. Carl Crawford, nice catch. And the Rays win at 11 2, so not a pretty picture in the Bronx in game one. Yanks try to get at least a split in the nightcap. They had David Wells going for win number nine. Top six, six to one Yankees. Carl Crawford, slow grounder. You make the call. Who will make it to first? First, is it David Wells who's carrying the load? Or Carl Crawford. Well, let's take a look. Even though he covered less ground, Wells gets the flip from Todd Zeal and beats Crawford to the bag. Complete game seven hitter for Wells in the nightcap. Bottom seven, Jason Giambi on first. Two out, 6 2 Yankees. Ruben Sierra, a single to right. Three RBI for Sierra, but would he get one here? You make the call. How far will Jason Giambi advance? Second, third, or will he score? Well, let's take a look. Aubrey Huff tries to make the play in right. No! Oh! Then he can't find it. Then he finds it. No! Oh! Botches it again. They throw the infield bobble by Terry Shumpert. Giambi comes all the way around to score, and the Yankees win it 10 2. Sox, the Cats' favorite series. Boston and Chicago. Bartolo Colon on the mound for the White Sox. And, well, his name's been in the rumors for trade to Boston. They almost got him in the offseason, so he's kind of auditioning. And, well, he fails that audition. Manny Ramirez was four for nine career against him coming in, and that's going out. A three-run shot. Manny 16th. Colon, six innings, five earned, nine Ks. It's 5-3 Sox. John Burkett on the hill. We go back to the first inning. One on for Maglio Ardonez. And that looks like it's gone. We take another look through the magic of television. Ball hits the top of the wall and moves into off the foul pole into foul territory. Ground rule double. Fourth straight double for the White Sox. Burkett would settle down bottom third. Frank Thomas, a voyeur. Jose Valentin, a voyeur. Paul Canerico. One, two. A voyeur. Bottom six, Frank Thomas batting 351 in his last 16 games. Looking again, not happy. Breaks his bat. Burkett retired 18 in a row. Thomas had words for the home plate up. He got tossed. The Red Sox go on to win this ball game by a final score of 7-4. to Ramirez, Kevin Millar, Trot Nixon, all home earned for the Red Sox, who have won four of five. Kansas City, second of a four-gamer. Twins have lost three straight. They're on edge, and you'll soon see that for real. Raul Abanez tying the game with the RBI single that scores Joe Randa. 
Kenny Rogers, one win in his last seven starts, and well, trouble just started. Ken Harvey had a big game, he scores two with that shot. 5-3, nobody out except Rogers. Now 6-3, J.C. Romero in, and Carlos Fabless, come on and squeeze me. Lays it down, Harvey scores. Royals up 7-3. Next batter is Aaron Guile. First pitch from Romero. Well, gets away from the Twins pitcher, or he hit him on purpose. That's what Larry Poncino felt. He tosses Romero, who pops a gasket. Looks like he's telling Poncino, hey, man, that was a slow-moving breaking ball. Give me a break. Romero isn't leaving without using up all his lifelines. Take another look. And, well, he may have had an argument. <laughs> he's in an argument. Ron Gardenhire, he's going to go Panella. Join his pitcher in the clubhouse. Al Newman wants a Royal fan or two to join him in the dugout. Come on down here. Order restored, kinda. Next pitcher, Michael Nakamura, hits the next batter, Randa. That scores a run and keeps the bases full for Mike Sweeney, who came in batting 397 in his last 20 games. A bases clearing double. Royals score a team record 12 runs in the sixth inning and record a 14-7 win. Milwaukee Cards and Brewers there, top first, no score, two men on for Albert Pujols. He's dialing long distance. Matt Kinney paid for the call. Number 19 for Pujols, it's three nothing Cardinals, but watch Pujols' speed as he crosses home plate. Slips a little bit, you'll get clowned in the dugout if you fall on a home run. The top six now, eight to one. Jim Edmonds says, I'd like a little bit of that. This off Valerio De Los Santos, Edmonds 19th, it's nine to one card. Two batters later, things get a little testy. Tino Martinez, ow! De Los Santos hits him right in the back. De Los Santos not happy about it. Bench is empty. Martinez would leave the game. De Los Santos said I had no reason to hit him. Bottom nine, Cardinals up 12-3. Keith Ginter into Jim Edmonds' territory. And Jim Edmonds, well, he was being Jim Edmonds. And that makes him a top 10 nominee. That was the good news. The bad news is he bruises left hip. He's day-to-day, -day, but the Cardinals win on this day, 12-3. Arizona at Houston. Astros haven't won since no hitting the Yankees. And they lose Roy Oswalt to the DL. Going to lose Jeff Bagwell after the 2006 season. Says he'll retire. He is retired in the first on the great throw by Matt Cata, who's making his first major league start. And how many times do you see a guy make a nice play defensively and then hit his very first major league home run? Well, not that often. Find the baseball and give it to Cata. Game tied at two. Now tied at three. Craig Biggio was hit by a pitch to start the eight. Got worse for Oscar Villarreal. Jeff Kent singles. Here comes Biggio. Here comes the throw. Biggio wins that race. Astros win that game 4-3. And I just um, wanted to say that I'm very happy to be back. Um, I know I'm playing tomorrow. Um, so exciting. They got me out there like I'm a criminal. And I really, I thought I was alone in this world, but I'm not. You know, I received so many support for so many uh, friends, family, everybody. And, you know, that motivate me because um, to see the support like that and made me feel great and you know made me more strong. Sosa says his side hurts from all the batting practice he's been taking while unable to play. His pride clearly aching even more. Sosa's seven-game suspension ended after Tuesday's Cubs-Reds game in Cincinnati, and that's where we are. And there was no Ken Griffey not playing. Twinge in the shoulder. They're even with him, even without him. So they're, something's going to change on that. We're in the top of the fourth, no score. Alex Gonzalez to Aaron Boone and... Gonzo out at first. That's a top 10 nominee. Top nine tied at one. Two on. Scott Williamson, Tom Goodwin. Goodwin to Barry Larkin and doubles up Gonzalez. We're going to extras. Bottom 10. Sean Casey up. Let's take a look at Casey at the bat earlier. Well, in the first. In the fourth. In the sixth. Let's go to the 10th. And Casey, two out, two on, and the left center, Willie Mopena, going to come around to score as Casey shops at the gap, and the Reds win 2-1. They lead the majors with 18 wins in their last at-bat.